All right, hello everybody, and welcome to a Primordialis interview with uh, with with the the creator, our very own Caluresis. He's been a longtime member of the Noita community, a longtime member of my community, and uh, he's he's coming out with his own game, and it's amazing. So, how you doing there, Caluresis? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing pretty darn well myself. Thank you. So yeah, Primordialis. Uh, it's it's basically how about you describe it in your own words? What what would you call it? Um, well, I think the team description is that it's a roguelike fish builder. Um, it's heavily inspired by Noita, so the mechanics aren't very similar at all. But the like general thing of you get to build whatever you want and explore an open world. Um, right. Is definitely like straight up Noita. So the, the creativity and the, the world being bigger than it might originally seem. The, yeah. those, those are really cool factors for Noita, I agree. Um, and yeah, I've, I've really felt like the it's it's almost like wand building, except you're the wand and you just kind of blow yourself up sometimes, and it's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and yeah, another, another couple games to compare it to for anybody who's who's not super savvy with those games. Uh, Cosmeteer, I don't know, did you did you ever play Cosmeteer or see it? I've played it, yeah. Okay, so I yeah, I, yeah I, I think that there's like a little bit of similarity in the the, the building there, but um, you don't really feel there's there's too much similarity between those ones? Um, or... There definitely is similarity, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. There's definitely like a reference for how to like... I guess structure like the building and stuff. Yeah, I feel like your UI tends to be a lot more intuitive than than Cosmeteer, thankfully. Yeah, like it's it's I try really to keep it super simple, fast. but still like flexible enough you can build whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. And um, so did you did did you make this in a, a custom engine? I, I think I heard that earlier. Yeah, it's all wow. C plus plus. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> that's that's freaking awesome. So, uh, how long have you been working on this project? Um, let's see, I can check when my first Git commit was. I think it was around July last year. Yeah, July is the first commit last year. That's crazy. So, the it, it, I would say the the progress is pretty spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, is this your first commercial? Is you, I know this is your first commercial game, but uh, is this the first game you've ever made, or do you have some other stuff that you've uh, t played around with before this? Um, the main thing before was just like small jam games, and this okay. is like the first big project that I'm releasing publicly. Yeah, yeah, and, and of course mods as well. Obviously, people know you yeah. for your your Noita mods and all those contributions, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What what else? What what is your favorite cell in the game? There's so many cool cells. Um, I like the jet cells a lot. Yes, they're so they're, nice. They're pretty fun to around. use. Yeah. Yeah, and, and not to mention you can like put one on the end of your tail and use it like a whip and stuff. All sorts of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So right now the game is a, a free demo on Steam, and you don't have a. Uh, a price plan for it or anything like that so people should definitely be going and trying it out uh, when when do you think a game like primordialis is done because it, i feel like it's one of those games that can infinitely expand infinitely uh feature creep and you know I, when do you when do you say we're done um well i had a timeline planned of releasing uh towards the beginning of next year mm-hmm okay but it will not... that be an early access release or a, a full release? I was thinking a full release, but I would probably be continuing to add stuff for a little bit beyond that. Right. Um, yeah, and, and ju just to temper expectations, it's one of those things where you, it, you're a solo dev, so you're working on your own timeline right now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that that's that's just your, your current goal, and that's cool. So have you it, like have you beaten your own game? I've been playing Primordialis for fifteen hours, and I still like I, I've made it into the second level. I haven't even beaten the second level yet. Maybe I'm too I'm screwing around too much, but I, I find it uh, quite challenging, like in a, in a good way. Yeah, I've beaten it. 
I think it yeah. actually gets a little bit easier the later you go, just because you get way more to work with. That's fair. Um, and uh, so what, one thing that is pretty obvious in the uh, the early game when you get stuck there for long enough is there there isn't that much enemy variety. Do you want to explain how you go about making the uh, the enemies that the player has to face? It's mainly just coming up with ideas for different builds and then seeing what would be fun to play against. Right, because obviously you could make, you know, something absolutely absurd and uh, it wouldn't be very fun to play against. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's it's cool that uh, a lot of the builds that you end up having to fight, like so sometimes I have to completely overhaul my build just to fight like a particular unit. And um, yeah, there, I find that there's there's a lot of like really interesting emergent moments. I know uh, the other day I was exploring the dark biome and I didn't have any light source, so I ended up caging one of the the creatures, <laughs> so that way I could have like a mobile lantern. Um, do you, do you plan on adding more emergent type scenarios like that in the game, or is it one of those things where? You just are throwing down a set of rules and hoping things like those end up existing. Um, I think that particular interaction was something that I thought about. Mm -hmm. um, and I do like having those, but I think it's also like I guess a mix of both. So just having uh, enough things in the world, like there's bound to be things like that that people can figure out. Right. Okay. Um, another big thing in this game is that people are really, really going to want to be able to make their own creations and maybe even uh, solidify them in some way. Uh, do you have any plans on how players will be able to do that in the future? So a good example would be, oh, I don't like the base ship. Uh, let, let me like create like a pre-build of something else with the same cost and then just load it in and I can play as that. Have you thought about things like that, potentially? Um, yeah, so I want to add a full saving system. Right now there's a kind of a hidden feature, which is just the dev saving. Um, mm -hmm. You can press F10 and F9 to load and save your designs. Um, and actually right now you could like overwrite the game files and replace the starting player design. Um, That's cool. But yeah, I want to make like a, a more in-game UI for that, and obviously like prevent cheating. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, for changing nice. the starting ship, I think that seems like fair game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, do, do you think you'd ever do what Cosmeteer has done, and they have like a, a workshop where you can add in uh, like designs and? other people can try to take them and make them their own. Yeah, that's definitely a thing that's on my radar. Mm -hmm. So how do you go... I know that there's um, like important gates that are blocked between levels. How do you go about creating a, a creature that is essentially a boss uh, and, and like not making it too ridiculous, but also uh, you know, making it interesting in its own way, not just another enemy? And the main thing is just, like, having less restraint on not making them powerful. And for the bosses, I just give myself no budget limits and make something that feels strong. Right. Um, I think right now they're mainly, like, more like mini-bosses, because they're not that different from normal enemies, but they're just a little bit stronger. Yeah, it feels like kind of kind of like coming across a Black Knight in Dark Souls, where it's like, yeah, this is a step up from a normal guy. Yeah. So uh, currently, and you can still like uh, one shot them with certain builds. So yes, I I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. Um, I I guess that leads in pretty naturally. What's your current favorite build? Like, what's your go to? I guess for well for early game, I usually just try to build speed and spikes, which is just like the basic to build, but it's pretty effective. In yeah, I find speed and spikes uh, in the early game is exceedingly effective yeah. in the current 
patch. Like it, it just feels like it's the the best one to help mm -hmm. you farm up and survive in like a reasonable amount of time. But uh, then later you... on, mm -hmm. I guess mutations are a big influence. But uh, I guess during like missile builds are always pretty good. Missile builds. That sounds cool. I, I managed to get like one missile build kind of going at the very start. Uh, I got quite lucky with my setup, and they, they could just, like, shoot out a tiny bit in front of myself, but uh, my turn radius is too slow, and I ended up dying to one of the dang Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. Those enemies are really funny, because they, they can either, like, instantly kill you, or they die from, like, a touch. Yeah. So, I, I know a lot of people these days are um, branching out on their operating systems now more than ever. Uh, what what are the challenges that that brings when you're creating this game? By branching out, do you mean like going to Linux? Yeah, going to Linux, and like there's the Windows Seven and Ten split, and there's there's even uh, there's yeah. sorry, not Windows Seven and Ten. There's Windows Ten and Eleven these days, right? And there there, there was some Windows versions. In chat. It's not too much differences. It's just mm -hmm. making sure that it supports like the older versions of different APIs and stuff. Right. Um. For Linux, I'll need to pretty much just port over things to the equivalent Linux functions. Right. But, um, yeah, I don't think that's going to be too difficult with the way I've structured things. Well, that's good. Well, yeah. I guess I can talk a little bit more about my plan with the demo. Um, sure, that would be great. Yeah, let's talk yeah, so a little bit more about the demo. I want to use the demo as like a kind of pseudo early access, but without actually having an early access that people have to pay for. Um, partially because like it's my first game and I know the game is a little bit unstable right now, at least in the early stages. Um, and also like Steam pretty much creates early access of full release um, in terms of marketing and stuff. Um, right. So I want to make sure that the game is like in a finished state when it becomes purchasable. Okay, so you're basically just using uh, the the demo as as a form of early access. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I suppose that makes us play testers. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm planning to continually update it up until release. Very cool. So yeah, that's that's a great way to to get involved is is just to jump on in, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that uh, the Discord is linked down below. I jumped in there right away. You can share your builds and whatnot. Everybody can see what everyone else is making. Mm -hmm. uh, I, now you're saying you said earlier that uh, Primordialis is actually an open world game. Uh, does that mean that there are secrets to be found within as well? Yeah, there's not too much right now, but I'm definitely planning to have um, a lot of side biomes and places to explore. That's really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. And I guess it, my my final question is, what is the best way uh, we as supporters, everybody who's excited for Prim Primordialis, what's the best thing that we can do to, to help support you and uh, make Primordialis the best game it can be? Um, it's just playing it helps a lot. Um, that always like advertises to all your Steam friends that you're playing this game, and I guess talking about it to your friends that you think might enjoy it. Yeah, um, so, so just word of mouth, yeah, and get, and just play it, mm -hmm. enjoy it. It's one of those things where, it, yeah, it's, it, I mean, it, it, I feel like it's one of those games where you've, you've really struck gold, and the, the, the gameplay loop is so addictive. That once once people try it, they're they're gonna be hard pressed to put it down. Mm -hmm. The big thing for uh, getting attention on Steam is collecting a lot of wish lists. So. Right. Okay. So make sure you go That's and wish list the game as well. I suppose. Mm -hmm. All right. And with that, um, I, I think I think that's pretty good. I think we covered quite a few bases. So once again, thank you, Caluresis, for for coming on with me. I hope you in, enjoyed this. It wasn't too too weird or difficult. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Yeah, cool. I guess and, one more thing I could. Oh yeah, sure. Is like the 
origin of the game. Yeah. So actually, I guess before this, I was working on a 3D voxel game, which was kind of inspired by like what would 3D Noita be like? Right. Um, and I got like a working engine in that, but it ended up being like I spent a year-ish on that, and it was like there's still going to be a lot of work to do. Right. Um. So I decided to like scale back and try to do a smaller project. So that kind of evolved into this. The original idea was to have um, a thing where you could draw shapes and have that become like a thing that you can fight with. Definitely a tricky one to to achieve. I know that firsthand. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't actually planning to do like the soft body physics system initially, but then I ended up just like at the right time watching a video about soft body physics systems, and I realized like it fixes a lot of design issues. Yeah, for sure. I was having because before I was thinking of like having different layers, and then it'd be like some complicated UI to switch between layers and make sure that they're all connected properly. Um, but then I realized like if I just have everything be squishy. And I can have everything in a single layer, and you can solve moving parts. Yeah, for sure. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. and, and that that reminds me of how uh, wacky the the one hard body item is the uh, the hard shell cell. Yeah, <laughs> that one. It gets so wiggly when you make it long. It's very funny. All right. Um. And with that, I guess the the we'll leave a question to the audience. Uh, what would you like to see added into Primordialis? Caloresis is very much open to all sorts of ideas, and uh, you know it's it's one of those games where once you play it, it's it's so hard not to start coming up with like a wish list of really cool things to add. So yeah, leave a comment down below, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe for more coverage on various games such as Noita and. Once again, Primordialis, because I've been enjoying the hell out of this game. And, uh, yeah, once again, thank you, Caliuresis. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a good one, folks.